Hello again, I am Blunty, softly glowing back there in its purple and white hues is the build I just did in the brand new NZXT uh, H200i Mini ITX case. Uh, did a video about it, enjoyed it very much, nice build, great case. Uh, but one of the standout features of the case was that unlike almost all other Mini ITX cases out there, this one had the ability to support a proper full fat water cooling system, including a big old 240mm radiator back there as well. And as I explained in that case review video, I decided to really lean into that feature, that uniqueness of this case, being able to support some aggressive cooling. So I went for the i9-9900K and a big custom loop EK soft tube water cooling kit. And in this video, I want to show you how that all fell down. Does this case and this cooling combination have enough ground to live with an i9-9900K overclocked properly? And it's a happy coincidence, as I was working on this build, Intel released their brand new piece of software for overclocking called Intel Performance Maximizer, IPM. It's a kind of replacement for their previous bit of software to, that they did uh, overclocking with Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. The latter of which was a very nice piece of software, it worked quite well. It all lived inside Windows and allowed you to uh, have some fantastic control over manually overclocking your CPU. However, the Intel Performance Maximizer does everything for you. You don't need to know anything about overclocking and which little acronyms mean what and which numbers to push which way to get the best performance out of it. It just kind of does it for you. And it does it at a very low level as well. It creates a little partition on your hard drive so it boots right to that. Doesn't even doesn't even load Windows up. It's just the, you know, straight out of the BIOS, straight into this. And all it does is sit there and run a whole bunch of tests gradually kicking up the voltage and the frequency and sort of trying to find the perfect balance for that so you get the absolute best performance out of your CPU possible. All you have to do is sit back and watch it. Uh, in my case, it took about an hour and 10 minutes to, to run its full gamut, and I got a 5 gigahertz overclock across the board, basically. That's quite a lot of free performance. The base frequency of the i9-9900K is 3.6 gigahertz, and now all of my cores are running at 5 gigahertz. To be fair, the i 9 it's turbos normally keep those all calls at about 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz anyway. So it rarely sits doing anything useful at that 3.6 anyway. But still, even if we use 4.7 as our baseline, that's still a significant overclock that does make a noticeable difference uh, in, in performance. Now, I'm not going to go into before and afters and overclock and stuff like that. The, the i9-9900K is like seven months old CPU, and there's plenty of information out there of the kind of difference an overclock can make on that CPU, suffice to say. More speed equals more better. Who wouldn't want free performance? And especially now that it's hassle-free, easy free performance. It's not do-it-yourself, figure-it-out dummy kind of free performance. It's install a thing, click a button, give it an hour, come back, boom, free performance. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to change a single number. It's just done for you. Uh, and I want to give the Intel engineers a round of applause for that. I hope, I'm looking forward to this software evolving too, because right now it just does a flat all core overclock. I'm looking forward to them sort of fine tuning this thing so they can individually overclock each individual core to its absolute maximum possible performance, just to squeeze that little extra bit of performance out that might be sitting there. But as it stands for a crazy easy uh, overclocking solution for the Intel ninth gen CPUs, I'm going to keep using it. It's say, I mean, an hour of my time I can spend doing other stuff, playing a game, watching videos, working on another video, working on edit, as opposed to spending three, four, five hours of my day uh, manually fiddling with overclocks to see where these things can get to. Uh, it's, 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 it's a game changer as far as I'm concerned because um, I don't do competitive overclocking. I mean, there's still, a, there's still a place for that manual stuff and competitive overclocking, I'm sure. You know, liquid nitrogen and all that stuff, they won't be using this app for that. Uh, but for an average user who just wants the free performance, this is such an easy way to go about it. But all of this technological magicry, it's magicry, really? It's not even, I'm, I'm, I'm committing to it. This, all this technological magicry is useless unless that case and that cooling system can't even keep up with the overclock because of course overclock generates more heat than usual. Uh, and the short answer is yeah, easily. Like, I mean, easily. Uh, and to get those temperatures, I just used Prime 95 because it's just, you know, it's free and easy and it just soaks up uh, the CPU and then maximizes that. And you can set it to generate maximum possible heat and just cook off your CPU. And I've used it for years now for testing overclocks. And uh, the overclock was absolutely stable. I ran it for a good half an hour to make sure we get sort of maximum temperature equilibrium and all the liquid got to sort of warm up and everything. Uh, and, and we got to about 75 degrees peak. 
and that's not bad. In fact, it's pretty damn good. I would be perfectly happy to use that, set at those overclocks with that cooling system permanently. Just, just leave it as is. Uh, the other nice thing I noticed is uh, between the NZXT fans on the that came with the case and the EK fans that came with the cooling system, the cooling kit system kit, uh, they're both remarkably quiet. I could happily live with that level of noise when it's at its absolute maximum churning away at you know 100% CPU and the, and the fans are working as hard as I've got them to, to set to keep that temperature there without being too loud and everything. Um, and the 75 degrees is well, well below any kind of issue for the i9-9900. You can go to 90, 95 degrees in that thing without worrying about it too much. But of course, lower is better. And of course, the benefit of doing an overclock with liquid cooling is the temperature fluctuations are less severe because the thermal mass of the liquid and the radiator and all the pipes and, you know, all the bits and pieces, it makes the temperature fluctuates uh, much sort of slower. So as the thermal, as, as a thermal, you know, stress, things heat up and shrink as they heat and cool down. Uh, that sort of helps even that out, which is why I like water cooling better than air cooling. Plus with water cooling, you can use colored liquids and stuff and the tubes look all cool and Anyway, what do you reckon? Think about build, doing a build in one of these cases? Interested in doing an ITX build? Feel a bit more confident now about doing a high-end build in an ITX machine and knowing you can keep it cool? Because I am. Next time I need to go aggressive with an ITX build, I'm uh, going to chuck it in that case back there. Unfortunately, that, that particular build can't stay. The, uh, most of the components were um, either bought by myself or sponsored components, except for the motherboard, which is on loan from Asus. That uh, has to go back, which is kind of the heart of the build. So have to do something else with those bits. Oh, uh, and also, just before I go, I wanted to point out, a lot of people said, well, it's not a, it's, it doesn't seem that small. I mean, it is a little bit larger than most ITX cases are, but it, this, this is the uh, previous generation uh, H500, H500i. Not the, not the new Elite one that I talked about in the other video as well. But I mean, look, it's not even a crack. I'm, I'm going to go over the camera and show you. I mean, it's, it is a significant size difference. Too. I mean, you're not wrong. It is, it is a little bit bigger than most ITX cases out there, but again, the trade-off is most other ITX cases out there can't support the kind of cooling this thing does. That's, that's the selling point on this case for me, as far as I'm concerned. But that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. And please make sure you've subscribed and all that kind of, to hit the bell and to do the thing and leave the comment and all that sort of stuff. We, I've got another PC build coming, another ITX build, but kind of on the other end of the spectrum to this one back here. So it should be fun.